Okay, now that it's installed, we start it up and it starts with this picture of a bee swarm. If we hit the left arrow, it goes to a different picture. That right arrow will go, also go to a different picture. Hit the second icon from the top to start the puzzle that scrambles the, that creates the pieces and scrambles them. We can hit the button next to the plus to arrange the pieces. There's a edge piece tool that will select all the edge pieces. If you hit the plus again, you get a blank new palette. Can arrange the edge pieces again. Now we'll drag some of these pieces to the new palette we just created. Okay, there is a a hide palettes next to the eyedropper. If you touch it, only the topmost palette will remain on the screen. All the rest go off the screen. The score that you see there counting down will start being non-zero as soon as you add two connected pieces onto the the uh, green surface there and it's time sensitive so it will start counting down um, as time progresses. Here I'm using the eyedropper tool and you just drag it over to an area to select the color you want to select by and it will find all pieces that contain that color. The gears goes to the preferences screen. Here you can see various items. We're going to switch auto grid on. If you touch on each one of the icons in the gray area, it'll give a little description of what each one of those things does. and you click the save button to save the preferences that you just selected. Alright, now if you notice at the top left corner of the screen there is a dot. It can be green, yellow, or red. Yellow means that there are some changes that have happened as a result of a gesture that the user made. Red means that it's saving the puzzle, and green means that it has finished saving. If you go to a different puzzle, you can go back and restore the partially worked puzzle. It has a little celebration thing that goes on and then it displays all the puzzles that have been solved so far. Now we're going to go to preferences and select a different number of pieces. And there's a weirdness slider. The weirdness slider you'll see will create pieces with a more weird kind of shapes to them. You can see they vary quite a bit. You can zoom the palettes by using a pinch gesture. And when you drive pieces on or off the palette, they will change size automatically to match the size of whatever's under the piece. You can 
when you hit the arrange icon it the palette remains approximately the same size and it resizes the pieces to fit the same palette Here we're tapping on the uh, image icon and that displays the reference image and it will remain on the screen until you tap that image icon again. Now when you put uh, pieces together they will move to the background. You notice that, that uh, when I'm putting pieces together here if they're over another piece as soon as they snap together they go under the remaining piece that makes it possible for your remaining pieces to be easier to to find. There, I just hid the uh, palette that was in the way. It just moves it off the screen until I need it again. I'm just going to place these pieces until there are no pieces left. Then I'll unhide those palettes again. arrange the pieces and open a new palette and here I'm going to place a single piece on this new palette and you notice when I did that that blue and red piece got real colorful that means it's active what that does is it finds out all the other pieces that are approximately the same average color so it found all those dark brown pieces now let's do it again with the blue ones uh, the other tool that looks like an eyedropper that's similar, but instead of doing an average color, it finds all pieces that contain the color that's selected. If you look closely at the... Well, first off, when you use the eyedropper tool, as soon as you drag it, it turns into a, what's called a loop. The loop has a, a border around the edge which shows the color that's going to be used for the selection. As soon as you lift your finger off the screen, all the pieces that contain that color somewhere on the piece will be selected onto a new palette. If you pinch a palette, at some point when you keep on pinching, it'll turn to a transparent color. If you then let go, if the edges of the palette are completely enclosed in another palette, then it'll combine the pieces of the two palettes together. Now when you do the color selection or the shape selection, um, you can set in the preferences whether it's going to select by all the pieces or just the pieces that are not hidden. Here let's toggle that setting so that it only selects from the visible pieces. You can adjust the shape sensitivity. The higher sensitivity, the fewer pieces will be selected. Let's see. See that I only selected one piece. selected one piece. Now 
the uh, pallets will automatically resize a couple of different ways. Here I'm showing you that if you pass a piece quickly over the edge, it won't resize, but if you pass it slowly next to the edge, it'll resize in order to accommodate the uh, piece that you're dragging. Also, when you create a new pallet, like right here, oh, well, I'm going to do something else. Um, when you create a new pallet, the first piece that you place on the pallet will result in the pallet remaining the same size. The second piece that you place on the pallet will cause the pallet to automatically resize. Thereafter, any further pieces you add will uh, not adjust the size of the pallet unless you move it slowly over an edge. Okay, let's see if I can quickly work the rest of this puzzle. Nope, don't go there. If you notice the score, every time I place another piece, the score goes up. And every time I'm just using up time, the score goes down. So if you place pieces faster than the time runs out, your score will eventually keep going up. Uh, this kind of rewards you solving pieces and doing it in a timely fashion. Uh, when it finishes this, it'll, if we have a new high score, it'll tell us. Okay, new high score. And we have a little celebration. And one thing that's interesting about that celebration, the pieces are moved in the reverse of the order in which they were last updated. That's just something you might be interested in. Alright, now we're going to change the weirdness all the way down to the minimum setting. And that will result in pieces that are about the same shape as each other. They look kind of funny, but they're the point is that they're pretty much the same. They all have the same shape of lobe to them. So oh, that's what the weirdness setting does. The score that you are awarded is partially based on the weirdness setting. The At this setting you get more points um, and the highest weirdness setting you get the fewest points because it's those pieces that look much different from each other are easier to solve. Now I'm going to select all the top edge pieces again. I'm going to show another feature. You notice two of them joined together. Uh, I'm going to hit Arrange. And the ones that are joined together go off into a different palette. That's kind of cool. You notice that when I solve the puzzle, I like dragging multiple pieces together to attach to the next piece. But you can drag single pieces and attach it to your already joined pieces to either one is just as, just as good as the other.
Okay, we have a puzzle with the maximum weirdness setting. See how different those pieces look from each other? to the puzzle we already worked on before and notice how it remembered where all the pieces were. One thing about that though is um, if you have a palette that has pieces that are on top of each other like here um, when it recalls a previously solved puzzle different pieces might be on top. They'll be in the same place but different ones will be on top. There we're showing the loop. Uh, I selected a brown color. Was it, it picked all the uh, pieces that had a particular shade of brown. So on the other palette we have all the ones that don't have that shade of brown. Uh, here I'm showing something else. When you, when you drag pieces onto the palette, like uh, merging pieces from one to the other, the uh, last pieces that were added get sorted to the bottom. And uh, that also works with uh, touching. Here I'm going to move each piece with the knob on the top just slightly and then rearrange it and notice how all of them get sorted to the bottom. And I'll do the same thing with the knobs on the left. And all of them, when I click arrange, all the ones with the knobs on the left go to the bottom. So you can use that to uh, sort pieces on the palette kind of cool. It arranges them in the order that you touch them. And here, since two of them got joined together when uh, I did the arranging, when I hit arrange, it put them on a new palette. If I just pinch them back into the palette, then they get separated again. Now when you select by color, you can change the sensitivity of the color selection. Here I, at the furthest to the left setting, it's very restrictive on what colors it selects by. Pretty much all those pieces contain nearly the identical color somewhere on the piece. If I change it to the further right position, it'll be much less specific. See how those colors 
they're approximately the same, but they're much different than when we had the other setting. Now let's do a little bit with shape selection. If I drag two pieces here, I can take the shape selection tool right there and put it right in the space and I'll find a piece that's approximately the shape that goes there. Let's try that again. And this time we're gonna enclose the space with four pieces. Obviously, there's not a piece that really fits there, but let's change the shape sensitivity to be less sensitive. More to the right. Now, when we drag there, it'll find a bunch of pieces that are approximately that shape. Let's change the shape sensitivity a little bit, a little bit more specific. It'll select fewer pieces that are more close to that shape. Anyways, that's how you can adjust how how sensitive you want it to be. Now the thing is if you use the shape selection tool the uh, value that's listed there on the slider in the preference screen will be the number of points you're awarded. Okay, the question mark tool. That allows you to display this documentation. I'm not gonna, you can you see it in the, in the app, we'll just scroll through it quickly. Up on the upper right corner, if you click on that, you get these various options. You can print the document, you can send it to any of these other apps. Um, and when you're finished viewing the documentation, you click the done button on the upper left and it will return to your app. We haven't started this puzzle yet, so the score wasn't running, but uh, anytime you go into the preferences screen or the documentation, or you hit the left or right arrow, the timer stops, and so you don't get dinged. Alright.